Today I'm going to show you what's inside of a turbocharger and how it works. Now the purpose of the turbocharger is to increase the amount of air that gets forced down into the engine and then when you add more fuel you can increase the amount of power that comes out of a relatively small displacement engine. For example this is a 1.9 liter turbocharged direct injection Volkswagen diesel engine but it creates the amount of torque like a naturally aspirated engine almost double its size. Now because an internal combustion engine is basically a giant air pump it's pushing air out the exhaust manifold you can use the power of that air movement to power that turbocharger and essentially you're getting all that extra turbine power for free because you're just using the airflow it's not like a supercharger where you have to use some of the engines power in order to power it now taking a look at the setup underneath the hood of this Volkswagen TDI you can see that the intake and the exhaust sides are actually on the back side of the engine here near the firewall we've got fresh air that's going to be drawn in from the air cleaner down straight to the turbocharger and the turbocharger is mounted to the exhaust manifold down below where it's going to pressurize that air. Now looking down from underneath you can see this is where the turbocharger is and the charge pipe for it which is going to push pressurized air down over the transmission to the intercooler. The charge pipe is going to come down to the bottom here to the front of the vehicle where the intercooler is going to cool it off and then that pressurized air is going to be sent through this tube here from the intercooler into the air intake. Here we've got the air box assembly where air is going to begin its journey at the front of the vehicle and be sucked down to the bottom of this air box here. Now the air is going to make its way up where it's going to be filtered out through this air filter. Now inside the bottom here you can see we've got this guard over here and this is just a spring-loaded flap that kind of acts like a bypass to allow extra air to come in through here. Now meanwhile most of that filtered air is going to pass through this part over here past the mass airflow sensor and then onto the inlet of the turbocharger over here. Now let's take a look at some of the basic components around the turbocharged engine here. We start with the exhaust manifold which is responsible for collecting all of those exhaust gases from the engine head and sending it through the outside part of the turbocharger around its perimeter here. The turbocharger itself has got two turbocharger turbines on the inside here, one on the exhaust side and then one over here on the intake side and they're linked together with a shaft so they're always rotating together. The flow of the exhaust is going to be sent around this turbine over here which is what's going to rotate that turbine and then the exhaust gases are going to exit over here to go into the catalytic converter and the rest of the exhaust system out the tailpipe. Now taking a look at the intake side here you can see we've got the intake turbine which is going to sit inside of here and that's driven off the exhaust gases on this side. Now that turbine is going to suck fresh air down through the middle here and spew it out through the perimeter kind of the opposite of what the exhaust side was doing that action of moving between the turbine blades is what's going to pressurize that air and send it down through this turbo piping to the intercooler now some of the other components include this oil line here which is going to draw in oil pressure from the engine to lubricate the bearing that sits in between here and then drain it back down to the sump through this line over here some more advanced turbochargers would include coolant line hookups as well in order to keep things cool now the top here we we have your boost controller it just has an electronic plug at the top here but it's also got some vacuum lines hook up to it here and it's going to control the speed of that rotation of that turbine in order to control the amount of air that's being forced into the engine I've already removed the EGR setup on this engine which consisted of an EGR cooler. I do have another video on how EGR works if you want to check that out. But essentially it's going to take a little bit of those exhaust gases, send it through an EGR cooler to cool it down and then reburn it. And that's just for emissions purposes, nothing to do with the turbocharger. Finally we do have the intercooler piping which is basically this large pipe here that goes over the transmission side of the engine and comes down to this radiator looking thing over here. Now because when you increase the pressure of air it's going to to increase its temperature that's why we have an air to air intercooler here some other vehicles will use a water to air intercooler to cool this air down before it gets pumped back down this way into the intake manifold now finally at the last part of the intercooler piping is of course the throttle body so in order to get a closer look at everything we're going to remove the turbocharger assembly from the engine here so we'll start by removing this oil line here we're going to remove all the 12 millimeter exhaust manifold bolts next so let's see if we can pull off this turbocharger Anyways, next up we're going to have to remove these manifold bolts to get the intake off. Alright, I'll remove that intake. Here's the intake gasket and here is the exhaust gasket. Now one interesting thing about the Volkswagen TDI engines is that the intake and the exhaust are actually on the same side of the head. Usually on most internal combustion engines you got the intake on the front of the engine and the exhaust over here on the back of the engine. Now this engine's got two valves per cylinder and it's a four cylinder engine which means that you've got one port here per valve and it's not a combined exhaust manifold built into the head. Now another unique thing with this engine is that it's direct injection 
section, but it also has this vacuum pump. Now vacuum pumps are usually common on turbocharged engines because you don't have enough intake manifold vacuum in order to drive accessories like your EVAP canister or your brake booster. So they've got this vacuum pump that's driven off of the camshaft inside of here to provide that pressure. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to be tearing down this diesel engine to see what's inside and how it works. So here we've got the turbocharger and the intake system removed from the vehicle. We're going to tear into these to have a closer look at how they work. Now taking a look at the circuit diagram of the turbocharger, we've got our exhaust gases that are going to come out here and spin up the exhaust turbine. That's going to spin the shaft over here which is going to spin the compressor wheel drawing in fresh air from the air filter that's going to be sent down through the intercooler and then into the air intake system to be forced down into the engine. Now some of the additional components include the waste gate which in our case it's part of the variable geometry turbocharger which is going to vent off some extra pressure on the exhaust side and on the intake side if there's extra pressure you have a blow off valve which is going to send fresh air back through the air intake system before the compressor wheel to be recirculated. Sometimes you can modify the blow off valve to vent straight to the atmosphere and that's where you get that nice sound when you let off the throttle. So here we've got the exhaust manifold which is integrated into the casting for the turbocharger and that's for the exhaust side. Over here we've got the inlet side that actually unbolts on the exhaust side. So we're going to do that but first we need to get this little inlet off. Got a lot of gunk on this one here so I'm just going to spray that down and come in with my wife's old dress here and wipe that down so I can get to the fasteners. Inside of there you can see the impeller for the inlet. So in order to get this off I've got to remove all these 10 millimeter bolts that go around the circumference. I'm going to remove this heat shield here. Now before I further take this apart, you can see how the bypass valve works here. There's a diaphragm and a spring inside of here. It's always forcing this in the closed position. But if you do apply enough vacuum, it can overcome that closed position and open up. And then the exhaust gases are allowed to bypass the turbo and head straight down to the catalytic converter. When you release that, it goes back to its rest position. Volkswagen's made it really difficult to get to this bolt inside of here. Okay, we'll remove that. Alright, we're just going to give this some gentle taps here. And here's the turbocharger. Now the turbocharger is controlled using this linear actuator as both controlled electronically and through vacuum control. And that mounts over here to this arm that moves back and forth. Now if we take a look inside here, this is actually a variable geometry turbocharger. Here we've got the exhaust turbine wheel over here and its bearing that sits inside of here. And then we've got this little pin tool that moves back and forth when the linear actuator moves it back and forth. Taking a look at how this turbocharger is set up, you can see all the air is going to be collected in the region of this turbine housing where the turbine itself sits. Now you can control the angle at which the air hits that turbine by controlling these little veins on the inside here. That's because this is a variable geometry turbocharger. Now if you look really closely inside of there, you can see these are little veins and that's going to move back and forth. You can see when I slide this ring back and forth here that that angle of that vein is going to change. That's going to allow the air to hit this turbine at a different angle based on the position of this ring. And the position of that ring is going to be controlled by this pin tool which moves back and forth and that in turn is controlled by the ECU through this linear actuator. Now that pin tool is going to lock into one of these holes over here. Now all of these veins would normally be locked into these grooves and then it would move back and forth like this to control the vein angle and thus how much air is being diverted from the turbocharger directly to the catalytic converter versus how much is actually going through the turbine itself and you can control the speed and how much boost you need. So essentially by using a variable geometry turbo you're controlling the aspect ratio which is the amount of air that goes in compared to the amount of air that comes out and you can vary that based on lower RPM so you can get a faster spool of the turbine wheel or higher RPM so this doesn't become a restriction and you allow a lot of air to flow through. Also noting this is a completely cast steel piece, fairly heavy and it's a 4 to 1 manifold as opposed to being a 4, 2 and 1 manifold for a different exhaust note. Now coming back to the intake side here, you can see the impeller's got an 8mm nut on this side and a 9mm nut on this side. Head up to my impact here. Alright, so we got the nut out there and we can remove the exhaust turbine wheel. Now this turbine shaft here has to be well lubricated and you can see that brass fitting inside of there is what's going to take the oil from inside of here and lubricate the interface between that and the shaft to make sure it's cooled and lubricated. Now the intake side turbine will come out from the top here. There's actually a giant snap ring that goes around the housing here. So I'm going to have to get my snap ring removal tool to take that off. If I can dig out that snap ring now, just pop off what's left of that snap ring. If it needs a little tap, 
So taking a look at the turbocharger housing, you can see this has actually got quite a bit of weight to it. It's a cast piece and it's got the bearings that are pressed in here and your inlet and outlet for the oil to oil those bearings that are inside of there for this shaft. Now this is the exhaust impeller that's connected to the shaft and that's what bolts the intake impeller over here. You can see it does have a little bit of a different design on the intake compared to the exhaust and that's because instead of sucking in air from the outside like the exhaust does, the intake side actually sucks air in this way. Now the design of this intake part of the intercooler is actually critical to its efficiency. You've got low pressure air that's going to enter the turbine over here and due to the action of the turbine rotating as well as the geometry of this curve over here that air is going to get pressurized as it gets sent flinging around this bowl over here and then sent to the intercooler. Now taking a look at the cross section of your turbocharger here you can see we've got our inlet compressor wheel over here and the exhaust wheel over on this side. The exhaust casing is over on this side and the shaft is what's going to spin the compressor wheel on the intake side. Now this shape over here kind of determines the path of where the air is going to come in through the compressor wheel through the diffuser over here and into the volute casing. Now if you remember high school pressure times volume equals a constant times temperature so as you got low pressure air coming in here it's going to increase in pressure as that wheel spins it up but that's going to also cause the temperature to go up and that's why you need an intercooler. Next we're going to take a look at this actuator which controls the turbocharger. You can see it's just a linear actuator that moves in and out and there's some sort of a spring loaded diaphragm in here. So we're going to try to open this up to see what's inside. I'm going to bend the heat shield out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and use my snap ring removal tool to remove this lamination here. It seems like this is completely vacuum controlled and this is just some form of a sensor that measures the vacuum on this side. And finally we have the shaft over here. And there's the lid of the diaphragm. And we got some more rubber pieces inside of here. So all in all these are all the pieces that go into this vacuum controlled actuator. Now the next major component is this intercooler. This particular one is an air-to-air -air intercooler which sits in front of the radiator of the vehicle and it works just like a radiator. Essentially air is going to come in down at the bottom here and be fed through these fins over here. The fins are going to dissipate the heat as the vehicle passes through the air and the radiator fans spin and then it's going to exit out through the top over here. This is boosted air after it's come through the turbocharger and you need this because the air actually warms up when it passes by the turbocharger and gets pressurized. Once the air cools down it becomes more dense which means that you can put more air into the engine which is better for internal combustion engines. Now additionally we've got a temperature sensor here which is going to measure the amount of boosted air coming out of the intercooler so the computer can determine that things are functioning right and you don't have any boost leaks. Now some vehicles use a water to air intercooler which would mix coolant in between the fins over here to help cool things down in a separate circuit. Now that for example would allow you to relocate the intercoolers down inside the engine bay or somewhere in behind the bumper. You could also relocate them on the top of the engine and put a nice hood scoop to draw in fresh air. Now the last main component is the air intake and it's going to vary for every vehicle. So for example this being a TDI Jetta it still uses a throttle body although diesels aren't really supposed to use a throttle body. That's because the amount of fuel that you put in controls the combustion in a diesel engine as opposed to the amount of air and that's why it's advantageous to have a turbocharger on a diesel engine because all that extra air that the turbocharger pushes into the intake isn't going to cause any ill effects such as pre-detonation. The reason why it's here is mostly to help shut off the engine so you can choke the engine off when you don't need air so it comes to a nice smooth stop. It also helps to control the manifold air pressure sometimes if you need to do different actions like your EGR system or your emission system and that is actually pretty critical. Alright, we're just going to crack this loose here so you can see just what's inside. And I can remove that throttle body and you can see it's just like any other drive-by wire throttle plate. This one is normally open because it normally doesn't need to be used and it's controlled by this electric motor. I'm just going to open up these torques so you can see what's inside. Alright, I'll go ahead and pop this cover off. And you can see you've got the two terminals over there that's going to correspond to the two terminals on this DC electric motor. Okay, we've got this little gear train system over here that's going to rotate this gear reduction which is ultimately going to control that butterfly valve. Now in addition as that rotates this piece here is actually going to be picked up by the sensor over here which is going to send a feedback loop of the ultimate position of this butterfly valve to the computer. 
Now there still are a bunch of auxiliary hoses and actuators that are a part of this system. So now that we've seen how a little 1.9 liter turbocharged diesel engine looks like from Volkswagen, this is what the turbocharger looks like from a Subaru WRX 2 liter. Now because that engine has two heads, you've got the manifolds that are going to bolt up to here and that's going to bring hot exhaust gases down around the turbocharger here to spin up that little turbine inside of there. Now this is not a variable geometry turbocharger so it still uses a vacuum actuated wastegate which is over over here that simply opens and closes that's going to allow the exhaust gases to completely bypass that wheel when too much boost is built up now because this is a gasoline engine you've got your hookups over here and here to lubricate the oil bearings for the shaft in there but you've also got these other two hookups here for the coolant since gasoline engines use sparks to ignite and not just compression they're going to run a lot hotter and that's why it's beneficial to run coolant through here Taking a look at the inlet, the air is going to enter through here and find its way around this volute and then out to the turbo piping over here. Now although these engines are almost the same size, you can tell that the Jetta is actually using a smaller turbocharger than the WRX and the reason for that is because the Jetta is more of an around town vehicle. The turbocharger is going to spool up a lot faster when it's smaller which is going to give you a lot more throttle response. If you've got a bigger turbocharger like this WRX, you are going to have a lot more turbo lag which is defined as the amount of time that it takes for the engine to spin up and build pressure in order to build pressure on the intake side so that you can get more power out of the engine. That's just something that comes with turbocharging and having that variable geometry turbocharger definitely helps with that turbo lag. Now turbochargers still have a lot of disadvantages and the main one there is reliability. Just look at all these components that are involved that you just don't have in a naturally aspirated engine. You have coolant lines, turbo lines, lots of extra plumbing and vacuum hoses. You've got these seals here that can go. Of course the shaft can wear out and then you can get shaft play inside of here and that can cause your turbo to wear out. Not to mention, you do have a big intercooler at the front of your vehicle, so if your wife hits a curb or something and knocks out a corner of it, well, you're going to lose all boost pressure and there goes your turbocharge. Now, additionally, a lot of people say they don't get their advertised fuel economy for these turbocharged engines just because they have to work them so much harder for a small engine just to propel such a big vehicle. So you want to consider that if you're going to look for a car with a turbocharger. And that's pretty much what's inside of a turbocharger and how it works. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one. Thank <laughs> you.